Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A lady living in Prague by the name of Vera Chermak had just learned that her husband had betrayed her. Feeling overwhelmed by such betrayal, she leapt from a third-story apartment. Incredibly, she survived the jump because she landed on a man below who cushioned the blow. He was killed, but she recovered. She then learned that the man she landed on was her husband. Now, some might say that's justice. The problem is that people look for that kind of justice in life, and it doesn't happen that way. The Bible instead wants us to trust in the Lord and to commit our way to Him, and He will cause all things to work together for good to those that love Him. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with Ken Legg. I'm Phil Edwards and we've been wrestling with this issue this week of coping with a sense of God's apparent unfairness in our lives. When we feel that we've been wronged, what do we do with that? And uh, Psalm 37 has uh, given us some really good insight this week. And the life of David, of course, is lots that we can learn uh, from there. What help have we had so far this week, Ken? Yeah, I think first of all, Phil, let's say, let's remind ourselves that um, you know David wrote these words from experience. Mm. You know, he was drawing from some rich experience of uh, many episodes of what would clearly be called unfairness in his life. You know, suffering at the hands of Saul and his other enemies, and so on. Yeah, uh, and so he he drew richly from from his experience, and you know, he said things like, "Don't fret, don't." Let this seeming injustice of life really get into your spirit so that uh, you get bitter and twisted about it and it eats away at you, you know. He said, trust in the Lord and feed on his faithfulness. Remember we made that distinction between feeding on the fairness of God, what we think he should do, Mm. and on the faithfulness of God, who he is. Uh, Then he went on to say, delight yourself in the Lord. Hey, let's go beyond our problem here and realize that there's something bigger and better in life than our problem, and that is our relationship with God. And then, of course, he exhorted us to commit our way unto God or or roll our way, a problem, onto the Lord. And again, we made a distinction between what is uh, rolling our responsibility onto God Mm. and rolling our anxiety upon God. You know, we can never get free of our responsibilities in life, but God wants us to be free of the anxiety. Then he said, rest in the Lord, which means to believe that uh, we're equipped for the totality of life. We know we are sufficient for all things. Rest in that. We don't know what life's going to throw at us, but we do know that we are sufficient for all things. And then cease from anger. Anger never produces any good. No good can come from it. These kind of things always make have much more power when you understand the context and a little bit about who wrote them. And you mentioned there, David, look, if there's anybody, I think, who would have had cause to carry out the opposite of these things and he certainly had opportunity to to go and have his revenge if you like on on Saul but he withdrew at every occasion and said I know I'm going to trust God yeah it's it's just quite incredible in this psalm 37 we've talked about these active words that are in there eight of them yep. all all together things like trust and rest and commit and delight and so on there's two more isn't there yep uh, the next one was depart from evil and do good and he's talking here about the desire for revenge upon your enemies. You know, we've got this saying in our society today, don't get mad, mm-hmm. get, get even. even. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people think that somehow there's some pleasure in revenge. I remember preaching once uh, upon the whole subject of revenge, and this guy came up to me afterwards. He says, you know, revenge is never satisfied. Mm-hmm. You never feel like you've got satisfaction with revenge because uh, uh, there's a deceitfulness in that whole concept of, of, of revenge. And uh, the Bible says don't return evil for evil. Mm. Uh, it's not God's way. Uh, sometimes we think that if people just get what they deserve, then we'll feel good. And, you know, even the Bible in, in the law says, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That was the law. And that was for ordering society because people do need to know that there are consequences for their actions. <laughs> I had a story once of a, a, a little boy that yelled out. He was, you know, he sort of started crying and his mother rushed in and there was this four-year-old boy and uh, his two-year-old daughter and she just pulled his hair. And, you know, he told his mummy what had happened and she said, oh, well, you know, uh, she's only two. She doesn't understand. And so the mum walked out of the room and there was another scream and she run back in and uh, this time the little girl's crying and she said, what's happened now? 
And uh, the little boy said, now she does understand. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, the, 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 you know, that's why God gave the law for society is that there, there are penalties. If we cross a line, we need to know that there are consequences for our action. But when you come into the teaching of Jesus, he said, you know, you have heard that it says uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, forgive your enemies, you know, love them, pray for those that despitefully use you and so on. And, and so people say, well, isn't there a contradiction here? Isn't there like um, uh, an inconsistency? And we need to understand, of course, that Moses was setting down some rules for governing society so that, um, you know, that there was some structure in society, mm. whereas Jesus was talking about our personal lives. Don't, don't be those that, res, you know, that seek revenge upon your enemies. Love them. Do good to them and so on. That whole concept of turning the other cheek and not having revenge, it's so counterintuitive because it's the, often the first thing that we... Yeah. We want to do, isn't it? We, we have the desire, we want to pay this person back for the thing that they've done to us. You know, do we yeah. think we'll get some sort of relief once, once we know that that justice, in inverted commas, is, is being dished out? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe some people do get some measure of relief. Uh, but the fact is that God will never side with us when we take revenge. And, and he won't for two reasons, Phil. Uh, the first is that <laughs> it's his job. It's not our job. Mm. You know, the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And so make room for God, the Bible says. Don't, don't you do God's job for him. Uh, leave room for God to do his own job. But secondly, uh, of course, he says that he has a better way for us as his children. I mean, think of, you know, if God got revenge upon us, we wouldn't be here today. And, and we're the children of God. And uh, like father, like son, you know, we're here to reflect his nature and to share his love. And so God's got a better way of stopping our enemies in their tracks. You know, he says, if your enemy hungers, feed him. In other words, discover a legitimate need in their life and, and meet that need. And he went on to say it's like um, heaping coals of hot uh, fire upon their head, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I'd like to do. <laughs> I'd like to really, you know, do something like that. But what he was actually saying is he's speaking about a, a tactic that was used in those days. If a, if a fortress was under siege or a city was under siege, they would have these trays of hot coal and as people were scaling the walls, they would, would tip them down. Tip yeah. them down and basically just obviously stop them in their tracks. Yeah. Now, now, Jesus is saying that there is a way to stop your enemy in his tracks and that's to, to overcome evil with good. They're just not ready for that. They're expecting you to give them some of what they've given you. But no, look, discover a legitimate need in that person's life and meet it. Because as Paul said in another place, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Um, you know, even even in Christian life, you know, we, we often meet flesh with flesh. But God wants us to meet flesh with spirit. Mm. Don't walk in the flesh, but overcome the flesh by walking in the spirit. Again, it's this counterintuitive thing, and you know the Bible talks about how we, our mind is renewed, um, you know, through the Holy Spirit, and and when He's working in us, we become more like you know the character of Jesus. Yeah, but we need to be aware of these things in the first place that we are, you know, we we just naturally want to tip literal hot coals on somebody. It's not so much easy to go out and say, well, actually, you know what, that person who's just uh, hurt me or offended me or done something, I'm going to go do something good for them. Yeah, and it's actually very liberating if you do. Yeah. Of course, you know, the thing to remember is that we can't do that in our own strength. It's Christ in us. Yeah. I mean, in my flesh, I don't know about you, but in my flesh, <laughs> God's no good thing. And, that's right. And I want to do those. Very, I want to get even. And that's my flesh. But but it's it's drawing from the life of Christ that's within us, you know. Yeah. Let's wrap this up, Ken. There's yep. one more piece of advice from David, wasn't there? Yep. He just said, wait on the Lord and keep his way. Now, the word wait means to bind together, perhaps by twisting, like, like if you entwine to... Uh, pieces of string together. So wait on the Lord, become one with him. And then he said, he will exhort you to inherit the land. Now, he exhorts us in due season. Due season is his time, mm. not our time. Uh, promotion that's self-appointed is not really exhortation. But when God exhorts us, that's exhortation in the biblical sense. So he says, wait on the Lord, let him work it out his way and in his time. Well, that brings us to the end of our series this week. Hope you can join us next week when we start a brand new one. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book What's Eating You? 
which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.